Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. All you need is love. Ba, 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 ba. All you need hey, is Georgie. love. Hey, Georgie. Oh, how do you know that song? Oh, hey, Jane. Well, that's one of my favorite songs by the Beatles. All you need is love. But honestly, I don't know how realistic it is, you know? Because I, I need also food and like bacon and cheese puffs. And I need a winter jacket when I go outside and play with my friends. I need my Hot Wheels cars. And I need a shower too when I get all stinky. Oh, Georgie, what are you talking about? You smell great to me. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so you know what, Georgie? You make some really good points. We do need a lot of things, but love, that's pretty important too, and especially God's love. And guess what? We gonna talk more about that in today's episode. What? An episode about love? Yes, that is correct. And you know what? Let's get to it. So welcome, friends and families. We are going to be starting the sixth episode of the Unnamed Kid Show. Woohoo! I love the sound of that. All you need is love. And the Unnamed Kid Show. Woohoo! Hi everyone, we have a new theme this episode, which is pretty exciting. And as Georgie talked about in the beginning, it is love. And you know, the most important love is God's love and Jesus' love for us. And we've learned that God cares and loves the earth and everything on it, which includes all of humans. But did you know that there's a story in the Bible that talks about Jesus' love specifically for kids like you? And so this story comes from Matthew 9, 14. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Don't keep them away. The kingdom of heaven belongs to people like them. And this story actually takes place when Jesus is a grown up. And there are so many people who want Jesus's attention. That includes a lot of the elders and really important people during this time, it includes parents and just all these adults and even Jesus's disciples who are with him. And you know who also wants Jesus' attention? The kids. And you know what? These adults, these people who think that kids don't deserve Jesus' love and attention, but Jesus reminds them that he loves everyone and they're all important to him. And so that includes the kids. And so that also includes you. And so even if you can't physically see Jesus, you can still use your imagination to talk to him and grow close to him and notice that Jesus loves you too. Hello everyone, welcome back and happy new year. I'm sending out positive thoughts and energy, love and light to everyone. Today, we are going to be talking about sensation. And I know you're wondering like, what is sensation? Right, Mr. Rabbit? You're wondering what sensation is too. Well, sensations, let me give you all a great example of sensation. When you're outside and you're walking and it's chilly out and you get a shiver or a chill going up the back of your spine, your hair stands up, that is a form of sensation. What's the sensation that you're feeling when your mom or your dad gives you that great big hug when you're coming inside? Do you feel lots and lots of love like I do? I felt lots and lots of love from Mr. Rabbit because I hadn't seen him in a while. So when he gave me this great big hug, it gave me this warm and fuzzy and tingly sensation where I felt really, really loved. And guess what? It's okay to talk to mommy and talk to daddy about what those sensations feel like. Mr. Rabbit, you're a little quiet. You have anything you want to say? Anything you want to add? He said that I did a really good job talking about sensation. Well, okay. Well, he said that perhaps in the next episode, I can expand on the different types of sensation because sometimes you might feel a different sensation when you're sad. You'll feel a different sensation when you're happy. You'll feel a different sensation when you're angry, right? Again, we'll be back to learn more about sensations and our focus next week will be on the feelings behind the sensations of feeling sad, okay? But I'm sending out positive thoughts and energy, love and light to everyone, and I will see you guys next week.
Hey there, everyone. I want to introduce you to one of my best friends. This is Min. You might recognize her as number three in the countdown. Hi, I'm Min. Min's new to church, so I was just showing her around and we were just hanging out. I was telling her about some of the fun things we do here. We have the gym and uh, we got the fireplaces. We do God's garden and sometimes we eat donuts too. We had our big Christmas celebration and the New Year's and it's already February. This year's going by so fast, Min. Yeah, it really is. I wish it would slow down, especially February. I don't like February very much. Oh yeah? Well, why is that? Well, if I'm being honest, which I know people say it's good to be honest, mm -hmm. to share my feelings, I'm not really looking forward to Valentine's Day. Oh yeah, that, that is coming up, huh? Mm-hmm. I feel like it's all just too much. People get cards and candy and it's all about love. Hmm. But what even is love? Sometimes I feel like people don't get me, so how can they love me? I know my parents say they do, but like my mom. It seems like she only loves me when I do my chores and do what she tells me to do. And then she doesn't love me when I don't do those things. Oh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. I hope you know that I really appreciate you and, and love you as a friend. Thanks, Georgie. I just don't get this love stuff. It doesn't even, what does it even mean to love someone? Oh, Andrew, I'm glad you're here. Uh, could you help us with something? Yeah, of course. Hey, hey, Georgie. Hey, man. What's going on? Well, Min has some really good questions and was just telling me... Wait, Min, you should probably stay. I was telling Georgie how confusing love is. I know people say I'm loved, but I don't really think I understand it. I do, like, I don't know. How do I know if people love me? Especially if I don't feel it. Oh, I just don't know. I mean, those are, those are some really good questions. You know, love is something that people talk about all the time. And some of us like to sing about love, uh, Georgie. All you need is love. Ba -ba -da -ba -da. Very nice, very nice. Uh, and even on the Unnamed Kid Show, for, for a while now, we've been talking about God's deep concern for everything that God has made. And that deep concern comes from a place of deep love. And man, like you said, love can be maybe confusing or hard to understand. And maybe it's helpful to think about uh, love as receiving love and giving love. Like one way we can give love is by helping God uh, take care of creation, love people, love animals and plants, right? By learning about them and, and seeing what we can do. Oh yeah, I remember those tips from Organic Bob, like, like making our own fertilizer and, and putting out bird feeders. Yeah, totally. And when we think about ways we can give love, one of the greatest examples is, is Jesus, right? When we read the stories uh, about his life and how he interacted with people, there's so many things he did that were really encouraging and inspiring. Um, how about this? Men and Georgie, if you saw your friends and their feet were really dirty and muddy just from being outside, what would you do? I would stay away from their feet. Yeah, that's, that's kind of yucky. Yeah, that's really understandable. Uh, but Jesus uh, actually took that moment to show his friends how much he cared for them by getting down on the ground and, and washing their feet. And I know that's not for everybody, but when Jesus did it, it was a really big deal. How about this one? Uh, Georgie and Min, what would you do if you knew there were some people that uh, most others didn't like, right? Like a lot of people talked bad about them, looked down on them. What would you do? Oh, that's... That's kind of sad. I, I would feel bad for them. Yeah, I guess I wouldn't know what to do if I saw them. Yeah, that's and that's totally fair. That makes sense. And, and Jesus actually went out of his way to eat with them, to have meals with them, spend time, sit with them, uh, get to know them, and, and maybe even told some jokes to get them to smile. <laughs> Whoa, that's so caring. Wow, that sounds so hard to do. Yeah. It, it can be, man. And I think it's helpful to remember, like, when we love people, it could be all sorts of different things. Um, like Jesus would uh, spend time trying to heal people when they were sick. Ooh, I like to make bacon noodle soup when people get colds. Oh, totally. Yeah. And, and Jesus would feed people just if they were hungry, 
Or a bowl full of cheese puffs should do the trick, huh? Yeah, and uh, sometimes he would give encouraging words. Min, I think you're a great friend. <laughs> and sometimes uh, he would have like closeness with his friends uh, if they were comfortable with it. Hey Min, do you mind if I give you a hug? Sure. <laughs> That's really sweet. <laughs> wow, this is really helpful. So love isn't just one thing. It can look like so many different things. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Georgie. Oh, thank you. Of course. Glad to help, man. Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm the dad to Nora and Micah and Evie Bergman. And today we're going to read a story called I Love You, Little One by Patricia Hegarty. High up in the mountains, the day has just begun. A bouncy little bear cub is having playtime fun. As high as the sky, as big as the sun, how I love you, little one. Dog and puppy love to dig, a hole that's deep and wide, and when they're done, they sit in it together, side by side. As big as the world, as deep as can be, I love you, and you love me. Perched up high among the leaves, bird begins to sing a happy song to baby chick snug beneath her wing. As tall as the trees, whatever the weather, I love you forever and ever. Across the smooth and shiny ice, the seals just love to slide, then cuddle up together through the sea they glide. As clear as the water, as pure as the snow, I love you more than you'll ever know. Elephant stomps noisily along the jungle trail, babies never far behind following trunk to tail. As high as the tallest jungle vine, how I love you, baby of mine. Hopping, skipping rabbits play a game of chase, then nestle down together in a happy golden place. As bright as the meadow where dandelions sway, I love you more and more each day. In the bright, warm sunshine of the jungle plain, baby cub snuggles up to lion's shaggy mane. As soft as the grass spreading near and far, I love you just the way you are. Trotting through the forest, sniffing at the air, as fox weaves through the tree trunks, Kit follows everywhere. As deep as the woods and the earth below, I will always love you so. In the deep blue ocean, turtles swim side by side. When baby turtle needs a rest, he likes to hitch a ride. As vast as the beautiful deep blue sea, I'll love you always endlessly. The moon and stars shine brightly at the end of a busy day. How much do I love you? More than words can say. Hello, moon. Good night, sun. How I love you, little one. The end. And that was I Love You, Little One by Patricia Hegarty. Hey, Georgie. Hey, love, Andrew, love. How love, our love, you love. Do love, you love. Love, love, to love, be love. Outside love, the in love, the love, snow love. <laughs> Georgie, love, whoa, 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 whoa. To love, drink love, hot chocolate love. <laughs> Georgie, do what are you doing? Oh, Andrew, I, I'm speaking love language. You know, we were talking about love, and I was just trying to figure out ways I could show and share it. And I heard about love languages, okay. and I thought I could find a book, but I couldn't, so yeah. I gave it a shot myself. <laughs> uh, okay, that's pretty interesting. Uh, oh, hey, man. How are you? I mean, how love our love you love? What are you doing, Georgie? 
Uh, he's actually speaking a love language, man. Oh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's funny. Sorry, I don't think I can speak that language, Georgie. I mean, I'm still having a hard time figuring out how to feel love. Oh, Min, you, you want to tell us more about that? Well, our conversation earlier did help that Jesus is there and shows up for people and puppets when and how they might need him. But like my grandma, for instance, she says she loves me, but mostly she just buys me socks and I don't really like socks. You don't even have feet. And my friends mainly just want to go to the movies and play video games, but I'd rather draw pictures and go bird watching. Oh man, that makes a lot of sense. And then that could be really hard, especially when you're with family and friends. Um, all right, Georgie brought up love languages before, and I, and I kind of want to explain love languages, okay? So basically, um, it's five ways of showing and receiving love. Like their words of affirmation, which are like saying compliments and supportive things. It's uh, quality time, spending time together like we're doing right now. Um, some people, it's giving gifts or receiving gifts. Um, another one is ser service, right? Maybe you help people out. Um, and then another one is just physical touch, whether it's hugs or high fives or fist bumps, right? Like uh, it's some of the things we talked about earlier that, that Jesus did. For me, I'm all about quality time. Like I like to spend time with the people I care about. Um, Min, maybe when you think about your, your grandma, why do you think she gives you socks? Well, everyone is different and unique. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and maybe her love language is, is gift giving. Yeah, totally. So Min, maybe next time, uh, just know when your grandma does that, it's, it's her way of saying she loves you. And I'd suggest maybe bringing a coloring book next time and asking your grandma to color it with you. Or maybe go on a walk with her and, and, and look for birds. You could do that with your friends too. That's a good idea. Oh, I love the love languages. I really think spending all of this quality time with, with you two is, is what makes me feel the most loved. I learned so much and have so much fun when we're together. I love, 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 you two friends. Love you too, Georgie. Sure do. Hi friends out there, it's George here. Uh, and earlier, Georgie, Min, Andrew, Jane, they were talking about love languages, right? The, the five different ways that, that we can show and share love, right? Like how God created all of creation uniquely and differently and beautifully. He also created different ways for us to show and share our love. Along with that, I also wanted to say how important it is too uh, to remember to show ourselves some love as well. You know, maybe we spend a lot of time because our classes are maybe on the computer screen and we get tired and frustrated. It's good to take a step back, right? Uh, maybe go outside for a little bit or, or get away from the screens, read a book, uh, whether that's by yourself or, or with a family member. Some other ways to show self-love uh, are eating healthy, eating good foods, foods that nourish us and make us whole and, and feel excited and, and ready to go throughout the rest of our day. Also, for those of us who have been uh, experiencing coming on Sundays to God's garden, we talk about showing love for all the things that God has created, especially outside. There are ways that uh, whether maybe we're not feeling the love some days or, or we're not sure how to give love, that we can look to nature, the things that God has created uh, to receive some of that love, right? Maybe it's stepping outside and looking up at the night sky and, and taking in all those beautiful stars. It's recognizing that every day the sun rises, right? And every day the sun sets, it's a chance for a new start, a fresh way to look at the day regardless of what has happened. It's seeing the changing of the seasons, right? We can be really cold and chilly in the wintertime, uh, but look forward to the spring and the new life that is to come. And the summertime when we can put our shorts back on and enjoy the hot weather. All right, so my encouragement for all of you this week is to, to think about some way that you can use these love languages to show and share uh, love with someone in your life, be that a friend or a family member, right? Maybe it's reaching out and writing a letter or, or sending a little message to one of your friends that you haven't talked to in a while, giving those words of affirmation, telling how much you appreciate them, miss them. Maybe uh, it's 
looking at, at a family member, maybe your parents who might need a little bit of extra help around the house, right? Cleaning up after yourselves or making sure that all your dishes are, are put away, your clothes are put away in your room, things like that. Doing those acts of service. Maybe uh, it's asking uh, a friend or a sibling if you could give them a hug if they're having a hard day. And it's always good to make sure that we ask uh, and receive a verbal confirmation that people want those hugs, right? Because sometimes we don't want the hugs or a high five or a fist bump or whatever that may be. But sometimes we do and those can be a great way to show our love for someone else. All right, so that's my encouragement for all of you to think of one of those love languages and how you can show and share that with someone in your life. And hopefully when we're back together again soon, I can hear about some of the ways uh, that you're doing that and that hopefully you're receiving the love as well. I wish you all the best this week. I'll be thinking about you, uh, praying for you, and I can't wait to hopefully see you soon. Hi everyone. So before we end this video, I have a prayer for us that I'd like you to pray with me. Mother Earth, thank you for loving us with so many wonderful gifts and for the kiss of the sun and the hug of the water. Jesus, thank you for being a safe presence to come to and for happily giving us lots of love and encouragement. Great Spirit, thank you for being with us always and for inviting us to love others and to ask others to love us. Amen.
It's good for us as the people of God to invite the Spirit to join us and to lead us and to guide us. So my friends, as we gather in worship today, let us pray. God of all grace, pour forth your Holy Spirit in this, our time of worship, and also in our daily lives, that we may have strength of which the world knows not, that we may be led into all truth, and that in the midst of our earthly trials and uncertainties, we may have the peace that passes understanding through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to worship at Colonial Church. We are so happy that you are here. <clears throat> Hear the words of the psalmist who reminds us to prepare our hearts and our minds as we come before God in worship. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will recount all of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. So our prayer this day is that you will uh, feel and sense God's presence reaching you wherever you may be, if you're watching this with us now through live stream or if you've turned it, tuned in later. And we hope that uh, you will have a chance to be able to fellowship with one another, whether in your family, home, or among friends. And we'd like to, of course, remind you today is uh, first Sunday of the month, so it's Communion Sunday. So if you have the time and are able, we would encourage you to grab some elements that you can use to celebrate Communion. So before I start, uh, uh, before we move into uh, our worship service, I would like to point out a few announcements uh, that we have. Uh, first of all, just uh, as you know, the Blessing Initiative uh, announcements of the award winners and potential recipients has been launched. You've received information uh, in the mail and via email. We just want to encourage you, please, 
uh, to vote for the different uh, potential recipients. And as you'll remember, the Blessing Initiative was a, a determined effort by this church to give away a million dollars to a number of different ministries and folks who were just doing good in their neighborhoods. So let's continue to see that through as we take this next step uh, of making our vote. Uh, also, you have received, you know that we've been having a conversation around name change. Uh, you know that the vote came back and we have decided at least potentially uh, temporarily not to move forward, but we did send out a survey and we would like to encourage you please to respond to that survey as soon as you possibly can, uh, just so that we can kind of get a sense about where everyone is in regards to their vote and how they view the future and uh, who, who God is potentially calling us to be. Uh, this week we will have uh, our next installment on Tuesday night of Faith and Justice. Uh, this is a, a kind of a forum where you can come and have a discussion. Typically we encourage folks to read a book prior to that, but this week uh, we will be uh, discussing a pair of movies, one of which is 42, which is the story of uh, Jackie Robinson, and uh, the other is called The Jim Crow of the North, which tells the story of housing segregation and redlining in Minneapolis. So it's, uh, it's only an hour, but it's a documentary. Uh, both of those can be streamed. Uh, uh, I believe you can find 42 on Netflix, and uh, you can find uh, Jim Crow of the North uh, on YouTube quite easily. So if you have a chance to watch those, please join us for a great conversation. And then lastly, we just want to highlight for you our mission of the month, uh, which this year is uh, Eagle's Wings Retreat Center located in Kenya. We have a longstanding relationship uh, with the folks there, the Snells, and uh, continue to support them. So please keep them in your prayers. And if you're thinking about giving uh, specifically towards mission, it will go in that direction uh, for this month. So I'd like to invite you now, uh, as we prepare ourselves, um, heading into worship, <clears throat> to enter into prayer. Prayer is, of course, a posture that we bring our needs and our, our desires and our hopes uh, to God, but it really also signifies the fact that um, our life comes not from ourselves. It comes from somewhere else. So to pray and to put ourselves in that posture is, of course, to acknowledge that. So brothers and sisters, let's enter into prayer together. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the gift of life, the gift of breath, the gift of fellowship, the nourishment that we need for our bodies, our souls, and our minds, that you give that to us day to day, and also in a special way in and through your word, through prayer, through coming together to worship. We think, Lord, especially this day about those around the world who do not have access to those gifts, those who live in places and contexts that are torn by violence, where deprivation is more the rule rather than plenty. We ask and pray, Lord, that you be with those folks and that you show us the ways that we can be their neighbors as well. We think also, Lord, about our own city and state we think about the divisions that we've experienced in our homes, between friends, families, in our churches. We pray, Lord, for your healing hand to be present in the midst of that, for you to bring your shalom to bear so that we might be one, so that we might know what love is, so that we might know what joy is, so that we might know what hope is. We cannot manufacture these, O oh God, on our own. We need you, Lord, and your hands to reach into our lives. Lord, help us also, each individually and as a community, to know how we can be hands of your hands in this world, your presence. How can we be there for our brothers and sisters? How can we be there for one another? Bring healing. Bring sight and bring guidance, Lord, to us. Lord, we think especially this day also of those who are in special need of prayer, prayers for healing, including Polly Patrick, Ali Zomer, Kim Hunnewell, Craig Westgate, Joe Findell, 
Dan Bryant, Ernie Andrews, Bill Colby, Aleda Teisfer, and John Schwartz. Lord, you are the God who heals. So we pray that you bring healing in the midst of their pain, in the midst of surgery or uncertainty. And be also with those who surround them, the physicians, the families, and give them comfort and strength. We pray also prayers of comfort for Rick Larkin at the death of his brother John, the family of Gina Tritle, Mel and Kathy Satterback at the death of their sister-in-law, Marcy Satterback, and Susie Burke at the death of her brother, Jim. Lord, we join with these, our brothers and sisters, in welcoming their loved ones into your presence. We pray that you take them and embrace them and hold them in your eternal love and be with our brothers and sisters as they go through the grief that is necessary in the midst of loss. Heal their hearts, we pray, O oh God. We pray also, Lord, and are grateful for the ministries of Deb Snell and Eagle, Eagle's Wings Retreat Center and of the work of Dave and Sherry Hall. Lord, we, play, we ask that you will support our brothers and sisters as they continue to do their work, their good work, and to discern the calling that you've placed upon their lives in the places where you've sent them and where you called them to be. In all these things, O oh Lord, we pray a prayer that your son taught us to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into trial, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hey, Georgie. Happy Sunday, buddy. Uh, I'm just calling to check in and see how you're doing. Oh, hey, Andrew. Uh, I'm doing all right. Hey, well, what are you up to? Seems like you got a lot going on over there. Well, yeah, I, I kind of do, Andrew. I you know, I've been thinking a lot about our conversations about love lately, mm -hmm. especially with Valentine's Day coming up. I wanted to be an expert on love. I love, wanted love, to love, be loved, and love, expert love. I love, 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 and love, <laughs> All right. do love. Georgie, love, Georgie, love, Georgie, hold love, on. Love, love. We, we went over this. We went over this. Love language is not an actual language, although what you came up with is actually really clever. Well, yeah, I know, I know. I, I just perfected it, and, and it's so fun to say. I so love, fun love, two love, say love. <laughs> nice love, one love, Georgie love. Oh, Andrew, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Georgie. All right, but hey, what, what is it that you're working on over there? Well, since I wanted to be a love expert, I Googled the most famous books about love, and I'm going to read them all. Wow, that's, that's really impressive. Uh, what, what are they? I've got Sense and Sensibility. Okay, that's a classic. Romeo and Juliet. Okay, good one. Maybe not appropriate for puppets. Pride and Prejudice. All right, a lot of Jane Austen. What, isn't that book like 450 pages? Well, I've also got Green Eggs and Ham. Okay, hold on a sec, Georgie. Green Eggs and Ham, is that really a book about love? Yes, Andrew. It's a book about the love of questions and asking questions. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> well, I've also got Mama, Do You Love Me, mm -hmm. Good Night Moon, and my Bible. Wait, how my Bible get in there? That's not a book about love. Whoa, hold on a sec there, Georgie. Are you, are you sure the Bible's not a book about love? Well, I mean, I know that there's love in there. But I was reading my Bible the other day, and there were like these lists of people's names I've never heard of, and some rules that don't make any sense to me. Like, oh, it said that we shouldn't eat owls in Levictus. Hopefully, <laughs> owl pellets are okay. <laughs> Georgia, I think you're okay there. Uh, and, and you're really close. That book of the Bible is actually pronounced Leviticus. Um, and yeah, you make a good point, Georgie. Like, there's a lot of lists of 
like family generations in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, and there definitely are a lot of kind of older laws that, that we don't follow anymore. We don't need to follow them. Huh. Well, again, I, I just don't see what that has to do with love. Okay, I get that. That's a good point. Um, sometimes it's hard to see that theme of love in the Bible uh, in, in every section, right? But it's helpful to remember the Bible is made up of a lot of different kinds of writings. Uh, there's letters and, and histories and, and songs. Oh, well, like the book of Psalms. Yeah, exactly. And, and then there's the Gospels. The Gospels tell all about the life of Jesus and, and his love for, for people. And all these writings together, uh, they're meant to tell us the story of God and God's people. And just like all of creation, that story is one that points us to, to God's, lo- God's love and how God just simply wants to be with us. Oh, you know, that makes a lot of sense, Andrew. And I'd love to hang out with God, too. I bet God would like to hang out with you, too, Georgie. You know, a good friend of mine said that when he reads the Bible, uh, one of his biggest takeaways is that it's important for us to try our best to love God and love others. Huh. Well, next time I'm reading or listening to the Bible, I'm going to try and think of that. That's a good idea, Georgie. All right. Now, real talk. Are are you going to actually read all those books? Nah, I'm going to go eat some of those uh, Valentine's candy hearts. Bye. (laughs) See you, Georgie. Talk to you next time. Today's scripture reading is from 2 Timothy 3, verses 14 to 17. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. So ends the reading of the word. Well, I add my welcome to this Super Bowl Sunday. And, uh, you know, we're not going to talk much about the Super Bowl, but I would just say that it's going to be tough for me to root for either team. One team uh, has a, a quarterback that has won it so many times that it's not even fair, and the other one represents a team that beat the Vikings in the Super Bowl, one of our few chances of ever winning. So I'm going to do what I do for every Super Bowl. I'm going to watch for the commercials and eat food. So I hope that you'll have a good time this afternoon if that's something that you will pay attention to. Let's pause as we open up God's word and see what God has for us today. God, thank you for your promise to meet us when we gather in your name. Thank you for your promise to rain down a presence and the power of your spirit to bring understanding and clarity that we might truly be the people you call us to be. For we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're continuing our series that we began several weeks ago as we think about what are the the tenets, what are the main things that we think about as being congregationalists. Continuing with our series about this gathered community, we, we have to talk about Scripture. Our foreparents were absolutely committed to the Bible and sought and trusted its direction for every aspect of their life. This series has reminded us as congregationalists, we believe that we are gathered by Jesus. We are a community of Jesus followers. We are led by the spirit that God has given us. We are invited to this table of remembrance. All are welcome to this table as we are on the journey of faith and we will gather around this table later this this service. We're held together by a promise that we're made before God and to each other in a covenant that bonds us together. We're called to freedom, the freedom to choose to be God's people. And today, we're directed by scripture. Abraham Lincoln, in a famous quote, said, I am profitably engaged in reading the Bible. Take all of this book upon reason that you can, 
and the balance upon faith, you will live and die a better person. Let me read that again. I am profitably engaged in reading the Bible. Take all of this book upon reason that you can and the balance upon faith. You will live and die a better person. As I read that quote a couple of weeks ago, I thought to myself, I wonder if he in some ways was suggesting what he had maybe read in Ephesians chapter two, that we are saved by grace through faith for good works. We have to ask ourselves, in this relationship that we have with God that saves us from ourselves, we have to ask ourselves, but saved then for what? We are saved to be helpful to God by making possible the community of heaven to be experienced here with all of us. But how will we learn to do this? What will guide us in this endeavor? What will teach us and offer us important feedback? What will correct us when we get distracted? And what will empower us to finish the good works assigned to us? Well, the Bible. God's inspired words about Jesus' life, the the collection of stories from the early church and, and the history of Israel. The Bible is given to us as a gift to guide us as the church, to guide us as Jesus' followers. As we read it, though, there will be things that are hard to understand, for sure. Things that will seem a mystery. So we read it with an open heart and an open mind and with faith trusting that God's spirit will help us as we read individually and as we come together, the people of God, to understand God's leading. The opening declaration of the apost- from the Apostle Paul from our passage today says that all scripture is inspired by God. The, the, the literal translation of that passage is all scripture is God-breathed, that God breathed out the truth that we are to follow, the truth that we are to be led by. And in that sentence, it reveals the power of God's word. It's the essence of God leading and guiding us through the difficulty in in actually trying to understand all of what it means. It is God's direction to lead Jesus' followers, the church, together and on our own individual journeys. Our foreparents believed that the reading of the Bible and letting it be a guide for their life was as important as eating and breathing. It was literally essential to living. How about you? Where do you stand in terms of the Bible, in terms of scripture? How often do you read it? How often do you open that up and allow God's spirit to lead you and guide you? It's important. It's helpful as we pray and as we read God's word and as we listen to good teaching around it. God will lead us, guide us, form us even more into the people God desires for us to be. I absolutely agree with the last few sentences of our scripture as it approaches this God's word and will it direct us well. I have been motivated I probably should share with you by scripture since I was a little boy. Really since growing up in the neighborhood where Mrs. Elfman every summer had a vacation Bible school that every kid in the neighborhood went to. It was a little song, a a little story, a little game, a little uh, arts and crafts, usually with macaroni, and then a Bible verse that we could memorize. And if we memorized it, we could go in the kitchen for a cookie. I was pretty motivated to memorize scripture. I'm still pretty motivated to memorize scripture, to be in God's word, because there are treats for us there. Oh, challenges for sure, but treats as well. 
God has things very special for us as we read together. In the passage for us today, there are some ideas for us to ponder about what scripture really is and what it can be in our lives. It says that all scripture is useful for teaching. All scripture is useful for teaching. It's, it's good for us because it will help direct our thinking. It will teach us the things that God wants us to know and begin to direct the way we think about ourselves, about the world, about each other, about our hope. It challenges us to think about the things that God wants us to think about and be transformed by that. In the book of Philippians, chapter four, it says, finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. The scripture challenges us to look at those things that are gonna benefit us and benefit each other and literally benefit the world. Some of you know a few years ago, it's coming up on six years ago, that I had a terrible accident. I, I literally broke my neck and I had to go by ambulance to a couple of different hospitals till I got to the place that was gonna treat me well. It was a scary time. It was uncertain of my future. I remember the very first night and I was laying in bed and I had kind of a panic attack, wondering about my future, feeling that I was claustrophobic in the collar that I was wearing and just uncertain and I remember God coming to me in a piece of scripture that I had placed in my heart by memorizing it. Some of you know, I've shared with you, that I'm kind of a Psalms and Proverbs guy. When I do my daily devotions, when I do my daily devotions, I read some Psalms and I read some Proverbs. Well, in that moment of my desperation, God came to me through the scripture and redirected my thinking. You know what scripture he gave me? Psalm 121. Many of you know this passage. I lift up my eyes to the hills from where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on forevermore. That brought such comfort to me, such peace. It literally redirected the way I was thinking. Scripture is useful for teaching, redirecting our thinking. Scripture is also useful for reproof. Reproof is not a word we use very often. It, Scripture can confront our actions and confront our choices. Interesting, though, to note, it's not meant for finding fault for anyone else. It's meant to find fault in our own lives. It's meant for us to be reconvinced of errors in our own way and pointing us in the right direction. It's really not meant to be used as a club over someone else's head. It's really meant to help keep us where we need to be to confront the choices that we make, confront the actions that we live out, that we truly could be the people God wants us to be. To reproof means to confront wrongdoing and choices, which we all need to do, which we all hate to do. The world hates being told they're wrong. We hate being told we're wrong. But at times we need to know we're wrong. We're going the wrong direction. And these words of God can redirect us by confronting us with that reality. I often used to tell students when I was doing youth ministry back in the day, as we read scripture, watch for those red flags that God has placed throughout scripture. Those red flags of places that we need to watch for, to be careful of, those 
Places we can misstep, those traps we can fall into. Things like pride and ego and self-reliance and unconfessed sin. It can create pain in our love life and we can create pain in others' lives. And ask us hard questions about whether we're caring well for God's creations. Yes, all scripture is helpful in reproof. It reconfronts us with our actions and our choices. And all scripture is useful for correcting. It's not just (laughs) enough to know that maybe we're not thinking right or not acting right. But all scripture is useful for correcting, actually getting us back on track. It can literally change the direction we're going if we allow it to. I've told this story before, so you might have heard it, but this is several years ago, back when we used to have a folk service here at Colonial Church. It was in the North Common, out in front of that fireplace that I can see right now. It's blazing fire right now. A couple hundred people in folding chairs, led mostly by my own family. I was here late in the afternoon on Christmas Eve, preparing for that service. When all of a sudden, I remembered, good missions pastor that I am, that we had partnered with one of our local ministries, and they were giving, they gave to us a number of names and families who might need some extra groceries at Christmas, and maybe some Christmas gifts. Well, being the good missions pastor and member of the church, I chose a family for our family to bless. But now late in the afternoon on Christmas Eve, I had just remembered that I hadn't bought them groceries. I hadn't bought them gifts. And now it's just a few minutes before we gotta be leading this service. But I couldn't get out of my head this remembrance of scripture that Jesus taught us that we have to care well for the widows. We have to care well for the orphans. Love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Ah, I couldn't get it out of my head. And we had chosen the Jacobsons. The Jacobsons, she was an 80-year-old widow that had taken her grandkids in because her daughter had died. Five of them, the oldest of which was in junior high. Ah, I had to do something. I didn't know how I was gonna pull this off, but I had to do something. So begrudgingly, I stormed out to my car and I got in my car and I drove to Jerry's. I walked up and down the aisles looking for something that would represent Christmas gifts. And then I bagged up four bags of groceries. I paid for it, I stormed out to the car and I headed to South Minneapolis. I couldn't quite remember where they lived, but I found, and guess what? They lived on a one way. So I had to circle a couple times so I could get in front of their house. It was just getting worse all the time, and, and it's starting to snow. I stepped out of the car to bring the groceries to the door, and I stepped right in a big puddle that filled up my shoe full of cold water. It couldn't get any worse, and I couldn't get any more bitter. As I walked up to the door, I tried to muster a smile as best I could, and when I knocked on the doorbell with a couple of bags of groceries, there was Mrs. Jacobs and this little old 80-year-old woman And she said, Pastor Jeff, come in. I knew you would come. What? Sounded kind of strange to me, but I walked in and put those first couple bags on the table, and I said, I have to go out to the car to get a few more bags, and I was puzzled by what she said. I was thinking about that on the way out to the car, through the snow, in the cold, knowing I'm going to be late for the service. I got the other bags and I brought them into the house and I set them on the table and she said, thanks for coming. I knew you were gonna come. And I said, well, Mrs. Jacobson, how did you know I was gonna come? I didn't confess the whole story. She said, I was praying. We didn't have any food. And I certainly didn't have any gifts for the kids. So I said, God, could you send someone? And he sent you. I don't think I've ever been more humbled by that experience. That scripture that God reminded me of literally changed the direction I was headed. I guess that's what Psalm 119 says. 
in verse 105. Your word, O God, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Literary scripture will show us the way if we will but follow. I have to ask myself from time to time, maybe you do too. Do my actions, do my thoughts, do my beliefs, does my theology line up with scripture? It's an important question because they change from time to time. It's scripture that holds us in the direction that we should go and helps change that direction if we're off the path. So many times, my friends, I've used my faith and understanding of scripture to justify my actions and justify my judgment towards others. Who's in, who's out, who's worthy, who's not? Who can be loved, who will not? It's not enough. It's not enough to know what the word of God says or even to acknowledge its convictions for it calls us to follow its direction. James 1 says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what it says. James, who says it's faith plus works that equals salvation. All scripture is useful for training us in righteousness. Paul ends his list with this. But righteousness, to be found in right standing, to be found in that right place where God calls us to be. All scripture is useful for training us in that righteousness. It can literally condition us and condition our spiritual life. Maybe we could think of God's word as our personal trainer, pushing us, working those muscles of faith and obedience and making us stronger. Because when you train physically, it changes your life. When you train spiritually, it changes you eternally, doesn't it? How does scripture do that? Well, Philippians 4 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Ephesians 6 tells us, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of God's power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. We're gonna need God's help to train us in righteousness. We're gonna need God's word that shows us the way. Why do we, the people of God, gather around this word that I'm standing before? Because it can, as the Apostle Paul has told us, direct our thinking, confront our actions, change our direction, and condition us for God's purposes so that we may be God's peoples set apart to serve God and serve God's creations. Is that who we are, friends? Is this who we are? Is that what we want to keep doing? Is it what you want to keep doing together? Psalm 119.11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart, O God, that I might not sin against you. We come to Scripture Trusting the spirit meets us. And God leads us. Shows us the way. To be God's people. Truly God's people. I declare. God speaks through the word. Will we listen? I hope so. Let us pray. God, we're grateful for your words. Even though we don't fully understand them all the time and we don't always understand how to actually live them out, we pray that you will keep at work in our lives, that you will encourage us in community to challenge and encourage and support one another on this journey. And as we open up your words, that your spirit will lead us and guide us.
God, we truly open our hearts now and pray that you would fill us to overflowing with your words that would direct us, cause us to follow your ways, direct us in the direction you want us to go, that we might be those righteous people you call us to be and all that that means. For we pray this in your name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to come to the table together, we have the opportunity and the gift to confess our own brokenness and the ways that our brokenness oftentimes lashes out and affects others. So join with me now as we say this prayer of confession together. Gracious and loving God, we confess that we have sinned for self-centered living, and for failing to walk with humility and gentleness, have mercy on us. For conflict that divides families and nations, and for rivalries that create strife and warfare, have mercy on us. For reluctance in sharing the gifts of God, and for carelessness with the gift of creation, forgive us. For hurtful words that condemn and for angry deeds that harm, have mercy on us. Heal us, O God. Renew us and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and follow in your ways unto the glory of your name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the good news <clears throat> is that we serve a God who hears, who loves, who forgives, who empowers. And that is a God who wants us to experience peace and to pass it on to others, to make our world a better place. So brothers and sisters, pass the peace. If you have a chance now, turn to someone in your home. If not, send a text. Maybe make a promise to yourself that you're gonna uh, make a phone call later on. And, uh, but pass the peace and receive the blessing. Peace of Christ, brother. Brothers and sisters, welcome to the table. This is a space and a place where everyone is truly welcome. Because it's not my table. It's not our church's table. It's Jesus' table. On the night when he was handed over, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Brothers and sisters, the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Brothers and sisters, please <clears throat> pray with me. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us this sacrament, united us in Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your eternal kingdom. Send us out now in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, as we come to this time of generosity, this is one of the things that's a little bit more difficult to fully capture when we think about the time of the service. If you had been a regular attender of this church, you know it meant some bags. Whether or not you were even putting things in the bag or not, you know that it was a time for us to think about what we're grateful for, to think of how we want to respond to God's goodness with our generosity. You know, you might think, ah, do I really want to give my money to make sure there's lights on in the church or to, that the sidewalks get shoveled? Well, maybe not think about those things. Think about the things that are happening in kids' lives. Think about the things that are happening in youth and in young adults. Think about the things that are happening in classes and, and opportunities to learn. Think about what happens when we offer this worship and it goes out, really, literally across the world. Your generosity is helping to continue the mission of this church. It's continued to offer the hope that we have. It's continued to use scripture for the good of God's kingdom. And so my friends, I invite you either online or by use your phone or send it in an envelope. 
but continue to generously give to the work of this church so that we might continue to be found faithful as best as we're able. Let's pray. God, thank you for the generosity that we've already seen, the wonderful ways that the members and regular attenders of this church have given and you've used it to help us, to help, help us live out our values, but also to live graciously for the world around us. So bless the giver as you've blessed the gifts that we may be using them for your glory. For we pray this in your name. Amen. friends, we're grateful that you would join us in this hour of worship. We're hoping that you've heard from God. We're hoping that you have sensed God's presence. We want you to know if there's any way we can better serve you or support you, whatever need you might have, please reach out to us and we will do our best to respond in the way that's helpful. Make sure you go online to our website and find out all that's happening in life in this church and plan to be involved as best you're able because that's where God will move in your heart and in your life. We're grateful for Communion Sundays because on Communion Sundays, we really remember what gathers us, the death and resurrection and life offered in Jesus. The scriptures continue to guide us. So open up your word, read your Bible, let God mold you into the people that God's calling you to be. And in the words of the wonderful anthem that we heard from our wonderful chorale, then we'll hear those words as we cross into glory. Well done, good and faithful servant. Well done. Go in the knowledge that God is leading you, that he may pronounce that blessing upon you one day. Go in his peace, now and forever. Know that you are loved. Amen.